all the positivity of the Dolphins going from Bill's game into Cincinnati came to a screeching halt. Their practice was taped. Tua had one of the worst uh, concussions that I've ever seen on a football field. And then, you know, the concern is he had won the Bills game and the Dolphins or the league, for whatever reason, possibly misdiagnosed it or slid him through. And then he had a double hit of two concussions in four days. And then you have the loss to Cincinnati when clearly you, you knew that if Tua was in it, it, it felt really good there was a good chance that Dolphins were going to win and go 4-0, which was mind-blowing. So you have all this hope and positivity for the kid, for the direction of the team, for the fan base, and then the crash. And so there's no denying the concern at every level, the seriousness and the situation, all this. So in my ongoing effort to focus on football and try to find positives within that, I'm going to talk about today – Jalen Phillips having his best game of the season. I'm going to do a little film look at him and his play to show just the sublime nature of his one major skill set. Now, you need a full complement in order to be more than a specialist to rise to the Pro Bowl, All Pro, and Hall of Fame level. Kids got time. So I'm going to go over his play in that game, and then kind of do a a round-out diagnostic of his play so far this season. So he can set that as a baseline so he can watch him through the rest of the season and see how he ends the season. And then you'll have two full seasons to compare and to contrast. So that's what I'm going to do after the commercial. And uh, But before, I'm going to have chapters. So you'll see the chapters there. You know, you'll see. You'll figure it out. I'm going to give a shout-out to you guys for stopping by. Thank you. I appreciate it for the likes, subscribe, the comments, the views, especially the comments, as you can see here, you know, and the grace. The grace. I need some grace. And uh, I just also want to give a shout-out to Ace Perhead, my sponsor, because without them, without you guys, this show ain't going down. Ace Perhead's betting software is the premier white-label platform for bookies to manage their players and grow their sportsbook operation. Click the link in the description below to get set up in minutes. Ask for the Curtis promo and get a special introductory discount. In year one of Phillips, I said, oh, this guy's got this skill set, this skill set. But he's a little finesse, and he can't handle the run. He was actually pulled out on rundowns, told he wasn't, he even said, I'm not really trustworthy enough on rundowns. And he had 8.5 sacks, which is great for a rookie. But in order for him to take this six foot six, 266 pound frame of pure just like fast twitch muscle fiber, and turn him into an all-star, a Hall of Fame guy, much like Jason Taylor. He needs to be a complete player and add things to his game. His baseline of explosion and speed and athleticism is off the charts. It's higher than Taylor's. But Taylor was a little bit more well-rounded, more violent, and he was able to be a full-time starter as a DE, which is much more difficult given his size, because you have to stop the run, than is being an edge player. But he does not have the physical gifts or the size of uh, Phillips. So in this game against Cincinnati, he was having a poor season in year two. I was concerned. Like, what's going on? It's not the end of the world. You know, this guy's got all these gifts. You know, you got to give it time to develop. you got to give it time. You know? Even Agba took four or five seasons. So... I was getting concerned. I thought he would have, should have been big for the Ravens game. I was looking to see him with Allen, and I really didn't see a little bit with Allen. But, but this Cincy game, he was a monster. And when, some of the, sometimes, look, I like to be a fair evaluator, and I have concerns here and there, even though I've seen some, some growth in some of my concerns. And that alleviates those concerns, and I see a possible trend line for him to become successful in those concerns. But what he does in an explosion, speed, athleticism standpoint, it really, it makes me laugh. It's so ridiculous when you consider the size of this guy and what he does. So I want to do a little film here to show you this one ultra elite talent. And while there's things he needs to improve, clearly, clearly, and this is not being negative or hateful, or it's the facts. This foundation of ultra rare elite athleticism, speed, and explosion with that body is the foundation that can create all kinds of success. Will it? Won't it? 
We need time. But when you see this stuff, it's it's funny. I laugh because he destroys some people. So anyway, here's a film. Let's take a look at it and see what we see. All right, here's Mr. Electric with the arrow, Mr. Phillips. And just watch him liquefy this guy with acceleration, a little rip and dip. And that's it. Well, more like just a rip. He didn't even dip. Just watch what he does to this guy. He's staring at him, and he, he's worried about him going to the outside, worried about inside, and he just freezes, gets the arm around his, his chest, which is a holding call right there, holding call, little face mask. Phillips almost has the sack, but then he rebounds and comes up and finishes him off. Just liquefied Volson on that play. Then you see uh, Phillips again here and watch a stab step. And then this is amazing what he does here. The recovery, the change of direction, and he gets pressure on like, what, a second and a half there? Watch this. Look at this. Again, just raw speed. Look at this. Freezing him. Freezing Volson. Now, Volson's a rookie. But Phillips is ultra electric. Now look at this. He's covering a receiver and watch him change his direction and pass coverage. Again, this is why I think this guy could play to will. Look at that. That is unbelievable. Now he has a little extra with Riley I want to throw in here. This is what we need from our linebackers. Look at this. Oh, that was a nice job of speed, read, and slipping the block. Look at this. I just had to throw this one in there. I thought this was nice. Look at that. Dang. Nice play. What he did to Volson was ridiculous. His recovery and chasing down the line of scrimmage of Higgins, a receiver, is ridiculous. It should not happen that way with a guy that size. But it does. And that alone makes him a player who can do great things. Now, last year, they tried to put him in the run game, and he, he couldn't handle it. They tried to have him just blitz on his own, man on man, and attack from the edges, and he had found some success, but mostly didn't. This year, similar things happened, but they went back to the successful formula of him using blitz, uh, blitzes from stunts and twists to get motion, and then to use that speed to get into these vacated holes and the success level is off the charts. He had 17% uh, pass rush percentage. He had one sack. He had one hit and three hurries. And he really affected this game in a big way. He abuses weak links in the line. And when you, can, when you do stretches and stunts and twists, all this stuff, you can have him attack these weak links and he can victimize them. And that alone makes him a good player, a player that you can get a lot out of. Now, for him to increase, to become a guy of guys, he has to add more to his game. And this is what I see so far. Jason Taylor didn't have his fast twitch and all this other stuff. He had certain things. He was good in a lot of ways, but he was ultra-violent. Like, like, Jason Taylor seems like a nice guy, but this guy's ultra-violent and physical. Now, when Phillips rushes, he's very physical in some ways. But when it comes to the run game, you can tell how they view an edge player by who they use to block him. And most of the time, they put tight ends on him and he gets neutralized. Okay? He will only get to the point of being an unbelievable player, reaching the, the, the ceiling of his talents when he demolishes those tight ends, and then they have to send guards and tackles towards him. Because unless he does that, he's going to get pulled out on rundowns. He's going to get pulled down on goal line downs. He's going to lose reps. And also, a player, a pass rusher, who is good, very good, at run stop and pass rush, he sets the table for himself because he's so good at stopping the run that he puts offenses off schedule on second and longs and third and longs, and he's still there, and he's on that pass rush. And it gives him a better chance. He's in control more of his destiny rather than a guy who's just a pass rush specialist. And then when he makes his pass rush moves, he's got the speed move and the dip. But he's got to add more. He's got to add the swim comeback. He's got to add the bull rush. 
and those take strength and violence. Now, I don't know about the violence part. I think I see him, he's very physical sometimes on his pass rush. But the strength part, he can surely add. The guy's frame is not fully matured. But he needs these two areas to then, what because what he's doing to weak links right now on these stunts and twists and all this other stuff, he'll be able to do anybody, weak link or not, on stunts, twists, and all that stuff, as well as one-on-ones when he adds that violence and power to his game and more tools. He even said he was working on his tools. So... It's, this kid is good, good, special skill set. We have to see how he develops. We have to see how his body develops, how his technique develops, and it's going to take a little time. The kid's ceiling is still high, but we got to see what his floor is. And I believe he's got a very solid floor with the speed stuff, but he's got to get a little better at this run game to be more effective because Ultimately, they're going to have to pay him a lot of money to keep him. And you can't just pay a pass rush specialist unless he can one-on-one pass rush. If he can one-on-one pass rush, then the kid can just pass, rush to pass and nobody cares. But if you have to scheme him in to use his pass rush abilities, that's kind of like you really can't. So we got to see how he develops this season. You have to see how he develops next season and a year after that. The kid's frame is not fully matured. We have to see. Anyway, hope this was interesting. Hope you enjoyed. I believe in a kid. This next stretch, we're going to need him because two is not going to be there. Teddy's going to be there, and Teddy's going to need help. Teddy's not bad, but he's not Tua, and I'm going to do a video on that to show you what Tua does, and he does a lot of stuff that people, some people, not me, you know, slept on, but this guy's skill set elevates the offense when you give him certain things around him. Teddy can do well, but it's not the same. So you're going to need help all the way around. And now Byron Jones doesn't look like he's going to be back this week and maybe, who knows, a couple weeks after that. X is injured. I did that in the, yesterday, uh, the podcast before this. So we don't know. So we're going to need pass rush. These Jets are a little feistier than many want to believe or think. Doesn't mean they're going to beat us, but it's not going to be a snooze fest. We're going to roll on it. I don't think. We'll see. But from what I've seen, I don't think so. So anyway, it's Curtis saying thank you uh, for everything. Catch you next time. Go Fins and get better to her. Start building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with acebred.com service that allow you to book action on sports from all around the world.